Vladimir Putin is an absolute megalomaniac is something the world has to learn painfully. But even before his time, Russia had implemented many completely exaggerated ideas. Therefore, in this video, we want to show you the fierce machines that Russia has built. Among them is a sled with jet propulsion, a more than curious airplane, or a vehicle that looks like something out of a science fiction movie. It will get crazy, so stay tuned here at WiseFool. We start with the 2B1 OK, a self-propelled gun built by Russia in the 1950s. A self-propelled gun is a gun that is permanently mounted on a vehicle. As you can see, for non-specialists, it looks more like a tank with an oversized barrel. And significant is an understatement for the 2B1 OK. The vehicle, which weighs over 55 tons, was built to be able to fire mobile nuclear explosives. And the tube alone was an incredible 65 feet long. An ordinary tank, such as the American Sherman tank, is only 6 feet long. Of course, the ammunition of the two-bone Oka was also of correspondingly crass dimensions. A single explosive charge weighed 1,600 pounds and could be fired up to 30 miles. Although this sounds impressive, the two-bone OK ultimately failed in practice. Indeed, the self-propelled gun could only fire one round every five minutes, and the recoil was so severe when fired that the vehicle was damaged. Therefore, Russia stopped production of this machine after only three years. Today, you can only see one remaining example in the Artillery Museum in St. Petersburg. After this big moving gun, we continue with a fierce machine called the Battle Mole. We're talking about the Trebelev Subterrene, and you can imagine it as a submarine that doesn't travel underwater, but digs through the earth like a mole. After similar vehicles existed in science fiction literature for a long time, Russia started researching whether a combat submarine could be realized in reality in the 1950s at the latest. Finally, in 1964, the time had come and the Soviet Union presented an operational model powered by a small nuclear reactor on board and seemingly effortlessly drilled through the ground. But that wasn't all. The vehicle was also supposed to be able to travel underwater to a depth of 320 feet, making it usable both underground and in the sea. In a test, the combat mole could travel 10 miles underground at a depth of 32 feet. Afterward, however, the machine exploded and further development of the vehicle was discontinued because of the great danger. After this machine, which was largely forgotten after decades, we now have a fierce machine that Russia developed only recently, which is simply impressive. Namely, the Robo C is a humanoid robot that looks much more human than robots have been known to do. The machine has 29 moving body parts and can not only move its eyebrows or mouth, for example, but also express 600 human emotions. So when Robo C is angry or sad, it looks authentic. But that's not all, of course. Robo C speaks 10 languages and has 100,000 stored language modules from which it can form sentences. In the future, it should be possible to configure a Robo C according to one's wishes with the appropriate gender, age, appearance, and an individual voice and then use it as a household helper, for example. What would you most like to use such a robot for? Write it down in the comments. After this futuristic machine from Russia, we now come to an old invention that seems downright crazy. Under Sweno project, Russia developed a large, heavy bomber aircraft in the 1930s, with mounts for small fighter planes on and under the wings and in the front. The idea was that the large plane could transport the small planes over long distances, saving them fuel. In the event of an attack, the small planes would then be detached and fly off on their own. Thus, it was virtually a flying aircraft carrier. And even if the whole thing sounds completely crazy, it worked. Project Sweno was successful in tests and could even be used 16 times in combat against Germany in World War II. However, since the large transport aircraft could only fly very slowly, it was also an easy target for the enemy, and therefore the project was later scraped. We show you now that the Sweno project was not Russia's only fierce invention in the field of aircraft. We offer you the so-called Caspian Sea Monster, designed and built between 1964 and 1965. Strictly speaking, this absurd machine is not an airplane, but a so-called ground-effect vehicle. 
This means the vehicle is already flying, but this is only possible at a very low altitude because it needs a floor or water underneath it. The idea behind this was ingenious. Due to the insufficient size, the Caspian Sea Monster, or KM as it was officially called, was not visible to enemy radar when it flew over the sea. It could not be seen by sonar, either since it flew above the water's surface. The gigantic machine was 320 feet long, had a wingspan of 130 feet, and could carry a cargo of up to 550 tons. But anyone who thinks that such a colossus is slow is very much mistaken. The KM could fly up to 300 miles per hour. However, after one aircraft had an accident in 1980, Russia presumably discontinued further development. From a machine that flies just above the surface, we now come to one that travels underwater, namely the K-84 Ekaterinburg, a nuclear-powered submarine built from 1982 onwards. Russia had built various nuclear submarines, but the K-84 was a different ballgame. It was 500 feet long, powered by two nuclear reactors on board, and could carry up to 16 nuclear missiles, making it a fire hazard. And that is a gross understatement. When the K-84 Ekaterinburg was in dry dock in 2011, a fire broke out during welding work while four nuclear missiles were in the submarine. It took firefighters a whole day to get the fire under control. If they had not succeeded, this could have caused an explosion with consequences comparable to the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl. Fortunately, the next machine is less dangerous, but all the more curious about it. The name of the Schneckochod amphibious vehicle is not the only reminder of snails. The builders copied the vehicle's drive system from the animal. The Schneckochod, the first models of which were built in the 1970s, moves forward by rotating screw-shaped floats on the vehicle floor. Both hollow screws have their drive so that the vehicle can move forwards or backward and around curves. Because recessed screws are used instead of wheels or chains, the Schneckoschod can drive in water and on any soft surface and is ideal for use in snow or mud. However, what sounds great at first has a significant disadvantage in practice. The snail vehicle cannot drive on solid ground, such as roads, because either the screws would spin or tear up the environment. It is, therefore, hardly surprising that this machine has rarely been seen in use. Last but not least, we would like to introduce you to a fierce machine Russia built in 1959, which first makes you think that it's from a comic book and not from reality. What you see here actually existed. This crazy machine is the Siva 2 Aero Sled, which was supposed to deliver letters and parcels to remote villages in Russia's north, previously only accessible by dog sleds. The basis for building this machine was a Gaz M20 Pobeda a robust car model from the 1940s. The car was mounted on the skids, and finally the engine of a Yak-12 airplane was added to the rear for propulsion. So the aerosled was born. The strange-looking vehicle worked, but was soon discontinued because it suffered from severe problems. On the one hand, the vehicle had problems climbing mountain. On the other hand, it could not be steered precisely enough to function reliably on narrow paths. And for the transport of packages, it also offered too little storage space, as one had to realize. We hope you enjoyed this look at some of the most powerful machines Russia has built. It's always impressive to see what technology is capable of. Remember to subscribe to the channel to get all new videos and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next episode here at Wisefool.